Beep, 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 beep. All the new, new and approved for the jester. Hello. <laughs> How are we? <clears throat> God, it's been a long old day. I've been out here for about the last 15 hours. I'm very tired. But I'm going to have a, <coughs> some cheese and a glass of wine and get an early night. Now, so here we go. I'm going to get this up first because it's important. Now, what has occurred that would cause me to be so terribly excited this evening? Let me tell you. We have the first signs of something serious from the UK government in regards to what they're going to do about gender. Mm. So I'm feeling quite pleased about that, and I think you should too. So I'll take you through what it is. Before I do that, if you can buy me a coffee do, it's the new year. If you can buy me a coffee do. Uh, but better still, we've got a new court, a cohort starting in February. That's the, that's the plan, if I get enough people. If not, it'd be March. So I'm going to be having a meeting towards the end of January for those that are interested so we can have a conversation and talk about what exactly the Warrior Teacher Programme is. So if you're interested, contact me via the website so I can put you on the list. I think there's about 12 on there so far. So it would be good to get a few more people on the list who'd like to come along and listen and find out what it's about because we started two new cohorts this week. Very exciting. I'm looking forward to meeting those people. Um, and the first session went very well. So um, other than that, here we go. Right, OK. So one of my favourite people on the earth at the moment. <laughs> I don't know her from Adam, but... but what she does, I like. Judge a person by what they do. Um, Kemi of the Bad Knock, who you may be familiar with. Kemi of the Bad Knock. Bade Knock. Bade Knock. I think it's Bade Knock. I have to get that right. Has issued, as of the 9th of January, <laughs> 2023, folks, has issued a written ministerial statement to Parliament regarding the Gender Recognition Act 2004 consultation. As you know, many of us, including me, have put information in it during this consultation to urge them to act. Uh, you know me, I want it gone, but it, that's, you know, we're not, we may not get that yet, but. Okay, so here's what Kemi has had to say, which I link in the Dubris to the actual government site that's got this written on it. So you can sit there with a glass of wine and feel smug, right? Here we go. Let's start. I would like to notify the house of the progress we're making in implementing our 2020 response to the Gender Recognition Act 2004 consultation. In particular, the House will wish to be aware that I will be updating the list of approved overseas countries and territories provided for under Section 1, 1, bracket 1, B of the Gender Recognition Act to make sure it does not compromise the integrity of the Gender Recognition Act. <clears throat> this follows previous periodic updates. Now, what this means is, for those of you that don't quite get it, I'm not saying you're stupid, just probably good to explain it, um, is that there are a number of other countries that if the Gender Recognition Act is given, a uh, Gender Recognition Certificate is given to somebody in the other country, if it's as rigorously applied in terms of application and getting it as Britain, people can claim the same thing when they come to Britain. Get it? Right, so it's about parity, okay? Now, what's happened is, in the last few years, since it was updated, 2011, okay, some countries have gone a bit further than they should have, which means it's no longer compatible with the UK legislation regarding gender recognition. Is it becoming clear? <laughs> right, so. A list of, the list of approved overseas countries and territories was last updated in 2011. A commitment was made to keep the list under review. There are now some countries and territories on the list who have made changes to their system since then and would not now considered to be considered to have equally equivalently rigorous systems, parity of rigour in the application of a gender law. It should not be possible for a person who would not satisfy the criteria to obtain UK legal gender recognition to use the overseas recognition route to obtain a UK gender recognition certificate. This would damage the integrity and credibility of the process of the Gender Recognition Act. In other words, it would go against the intention of Parliament and the will of the people. Very important, okay? When law works, eh? Ooh. We are finalising details of overseas countries and territories to be removed from the list via an affirmative statutory instrument. These compromised countries and territories where there is a clear indication that the country now no longer has a system at least as rigorous as those in the Gender Recognition Act 2004. We are undertaking a thorough checking system to verify our understanding of each over overseas system in question. So what they're doing is they're looking at places that have gone too far with this gender ideological nonsense, including America, I should imagine. And they're going to look and see what's going on. And they're going to say, right, does that have the same 
standards of expectation of what that means and what it can do, as we already have in UK law, according to the 2004 law that was passed by the old parliament back then. It was, it was a load of nonsense when it was passed then, and it's nonsense now, but that's not the point. What Kemi is saying here is that if they do not have the same rigorous application of law as we do here in the UK, then you're going to go, they're going to take them off the list. <laughs> That's what happens when you go too far, see? That's what happens when you go, when you go down Looney Road. This is what happens to you. When you've gone, you know, hey, hey, gender, hey, <laughs> and ridden off into the sunset like some, you know, non-binary cowboy. This is what happens to you, right when you go too far. We don't like it up a... They don't like it up a... Ooh, got an itch. Right, so... <laughs> I will, inform, I will formally engage with other colleagues and ministers from developed governments in advance of laying the statutory instrument. The government is committed to ensuring that this outcome of the Gender Recognition, Recognition Act consultation is followed through and upheld. An overseas list will be updated via statutory instrument more regularly in the future. So not only... Not only are they going to be making sure that they... Exclude countries now who've gone off on the gender woo-woo horse, you know, yahoo! <laughs> and gone, you know, okay, they're gone, they're out of here. <laughs> they're now going to, you know, and remove them from the list. They're now going to make sure that the list is updated more regularly, which means they're going to be keeping an eye on the legislative procedures and processes taking place in other countries. Well, is there another country close to us that might do something like that? Is that, a, what's it called, um, what's it, Scotland? Scotland? No, uh, uh, Skittleland. No, um... Oh, that's right, it's Scotland, isn't it? <laughs> so I would imagine that that would apply equally to Scotland. <laughs> Which means we can't be sure, so don't get too excited like me. We can't be sure that this is not actually a warning shot across the brows to Scotland, as it looks like they're not going to do S33, they're going to do S35. So, you know, which means they're going to stop it from getting royal assent so that they can't go through that ridiculous GRR from wee Jimmy Crunky. So, it's interesting. It's like this sort of intense political manoeuvring and I think it's fascinating to watch. So they'll update the list and they'll say, if you've got this, 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 you've got this you're not staying on the list because we're not going to accept it in this country. Well, what if Scotland's in that bunch? There's no way that they're then going to go, but it's all right if you're in Scotland. It just simply isn't going to happen. They're going to stop it. <laughs> that's my thinking. I think it's me being logical, and I'd be intrigued to know whether you think it's the same thing. But that sounds to me like that's as logical as it gets. <laughs> they're going to be fuming. <laughs> These LARPing men and women are going to absolutely be spitting their dummies out when they realise the full ramifications of a simple ministerial statement. Talk about the use of power. Absolutely superb. But anyway, I might be wrong. So now wait and see when, you know, Dennis has had a nose and the people at Sex Matters and those that are more in the know than I am in regards to the law will be able to tell us a little more about whether or not this is as exciting as I want, I want it to be, and I think it is. Um, other than that, I'm still going to celebrate. What the hell? I could always, you know, say I was wrong tomorrow. But for today, I'm going to feel like I'm right. Um, and I think this is a very distinct um, sign of how the wind is going to blow. So if I was you lot who were moaning about the fact that you want to be something you're not, I'd, you know, suck it up. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Go jest. <laughs>